Sevens, this is great to see you again. And of course, I'm Helen, and that means that this is your natural sciences lesson. We are exploring the periodic table and all the elements that we find in the periodic table. And today, our job is to uncover the properties of semi-metals. So, remember what we've been discussing over our last lessons. We've been saying that the periodic table is like a map of the elements. Just as a region's position on Earth gives us information about its climate, so an element's position in the periodic table is going to tell us something about its properties. So if we looked at the, the Earth and we said, well, the equator kind of goes around like that. If we looked at countries that are on the same level or the same latitude as each other, we will find probably that the climate in this region in Africa is very similar to the climate in that region in South America. So we know that where a particular country is, where a particular region is, it's going to have a certain climate based on where it is found. And in the same way, the periodic table is going to tell us something about an element's properties based on the region in which it is found on the periodic table. So do you remember those different regions? We have learnt about the metals, which are all those elements indicated in yellow. In our last lesson, we looked at the non-metals, which are the elements such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. And metals and non-metals were almost the opposites of each other in terms of their properties. Well, today we're looking at the staircase elements, the elements that can't decide, am I a metal or am I a non-metal? And these are the semi-metals, and that is the focus of our lesson today. So, we're going to attack this lesson in a slightly different way. We're going to pretend that you are a brilliant chemistry student. You have great knowledge of the elements. After all, you have been studying the periodic table for so long, and I've been sharing information with you, so you are now an element expert. Your professors have included you in the team analyzing a new element. Your job is to say where this new element would be put into or placed into the periodic table. So we have explored this new, very strange element, and we've discovered certain properties of this element. Now remember in our two previous lessons we established that metals have certain properties. They shine, they're very hard, they're ductile, they're malleable, they have high melting points. We discovered that non-metals are bad conductors, they're not very hard at all, in fact they become brittle and powdery if they try to if you try to hammer them so where are we going to place this particular example of an element based on what we see in terms of its properties so here's the information after lots of investigation we have discovered that this element exists in two forms Form one is a dark gray powder, and form two is a shiny crystalline metal. And if we focus on it in great detail, we can see that the crystals are long and they almost orientate or organize themselves in parallel lines. Now, this idea of an element having two forms is not uncommon. It does exist. 
Do you remember that we've been speaking about carbon having different forms or allotropes? And we've seen that it could be in the form of a diamond crystal. It could be in the form of graphite in your pencils. It could be in the form of charcoal. But in terms of these different allotropes of carbon, they all have the same properties. If we hammered them, they will shatter into powder. So we can see that although there's different forms of carbon or allotropes of carbon, all those different forms still have a very similar set of um, identifying properties. Now we have this element and one of its allotropes is a powder and dull. We can see that it doesn't shine. And the other allotrope is a shiny metallic form with crystals. And we've got a bit of a problem here. So we continue with our investigation. We take a bar or a disc of this shiny metal and we try and bend it. So we're trying now to work out, could the metallic allotrope, could it be ductile maybe? Could we bend it? Is it malleable? Could we hammer it into flat sheets? Could we pull it? Is it going to be tensile? Will it not break if we pull the metal? So we're going to try and bend it. And we find out it does not bend and it shatters like glass. So our next investigation was to take it up to the first story of our building that we are working in and drop it a few meters to the ground. Is it going to be very durable? Is it going to last in the form in which we see it as a bar of shiny metallic substance? Well, we drop it from this height and it also shatters like glass. This is very strange. So we need to apply something a little bit more exacting. Remember we know that usually metals are good conductors of heat and electricity and non-metals are poor conductors or insulators. So let's try the conduction experiment. Let's see if it's going to conduct heat and electricity and we do these investigations at room temperature and we find out it's not a good conductor but it's also not a good insulator. What is happening here? You decide well because you're so brilliant we're going to take this chunk of element that we have and we're going to put it in the freezer what's going to happen then and we see when we take it out of the freezer when it's very very cold suddenly it becomes a good conductor of heat and electricity this is a very strange substance so let's now try and analyze it let's compare it when we analyze it we're breaking it down into its different properties because we need to put it into the metals group or the non-metals group based on what we can observe on our evidence. So is it shiny? Well yes we can see that it is shiny. Is it powdery? Mm, yes it's also powdery. Is it malleable? Can we flatten it into sheets, strong sheets? No because when we try and do that it is brittle and it shatters like glass. Likewise we can't pull it into long wires. It is not shiny, it's very dull when it is in its powder form but it's also shiny when it's in its shiny form. Do you see that we've got a problem here? Is it a conductor of heat and electricity? Well maybe only when it's cold. So only when freezing will it act as a conductor. And is it a good insulator? Mm, no, not really. And we can say no, we, we, we've got a problem there. So where should we put it on the periodic table? Is it a metal or is it a non-metal?
we can see that we've got characteristics of both metallic elements and non-metallic elements and this should give you a clue about where we should locate it on the periodic table. Now this element that I've been talking about is not some made-up imaginary element, it's a real element. Its name is tellurium and it has the symbol TE. So it's a real thing, it's very very rare. It does not exist in large abundant uh, or in abundance in the Earth's crust. It's very, very rare. It's usually found as an alloy together with gold. So the first time it was discovered, it was actually discovered inside a gold mine. But what we notice about this problematic tellurium child is that some of its properties are metallic, but the other properties are non-metallic. So based on this puzzle, where should we put tellurium in the periodic table? Can you predict where it should go? Can you think about what we've been discussing today? What kind of element have we been discussing? I hope you're shouting it out loud and clear. Of course, tellurium is a semi-metal. Let's look at our seven examples of semi-metals and let's see where we find it. So if we move down our steps and across our periods, there we find tellurium. And all of these semi-metals are very difficult to classify. They have properties of metals, but they also have properties of non-metals. It's like they have a split personality. They cannot decide what they are. And so we put them all into the group that we call semi-metals that stand as a stairway between our metals and our non-metals. So there they all are, the stairway or the step elements, semi-metals. They're going to have some of their properties which are metallic. And they're going to have some of their properties that are non-metallic. So we can see that we can't put them all into one group and say, well, you know, some days we'll call them a metal when they're in some of their allotropes and some days we'll call it a non-metal. We then decide, no, we actually can't make a decision. So we put all of these elements, these very interesting elements, we put them into the group called the semi-metals. Now removing all of my scribbling here, here is silicone and you are familiar with silicone. Maybe you've seen it on those friendship bracelets, maybe you've seen it in bakeware. Uh, you can make have little cookie cups or muffin cups made out of silicone and when you put them in the oven they don't melt even though they look like they're kind of rubbery or plastic and should melt at high temperatures. So we see that we've got these semi-metals that have very very different properties, very interesting group of elements to discuss. What have we covered so far? We've looked at properties of metals semi-metals and non-metals as three main groups on the periodic table. What are we going to look at next? I'll keep you guessing because that's it for our lesson today. Please join me next time when we explore more about elements. For today, goodbye.